you have a <clears throat> fairy that is uh, makes it hard to under to understand uh, the question, uh, separated from uh, what could be called the rest of the society, so to speak. So uh, the problem is that people often see uh, technology as one layer, um, isolated uh, from, I don't know, economics, uh, politics, uh, mores, uh, life. <laughs> but that's not the way it is for humans, at least. I mean, for thousands and hundreds of thousands of years, uh, the drivers uh, have uh, connected what uh, the society is made of and what the technology is doing in it. So it's very hard to isolate the, 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 the drivers. They can come from many different uh, Sources. So, if we want to work uh, in this uh, interview, we have to make sure that uh, you accept the possibility that uh, basically society and technology are the two uh, sides of the same uh, coin. Greed, uh, ambition, uh, poverty, uh, hunger, uh, um, powers, of course, um, uh, ingenuity, uh, I mean, the thousands of uh, things that could explain as well uh, uh, politics or art or economics. I mean, it's very difficult to isolate uh, one little bit, which would be the introduction of uh, uh, non human resources inside a situation. Social division of labor is just one, one of the many many uh, things which could explain the uh, organization of uh, what could be called the techno-social or socio-technical uh, assemblage. Um, if you take, uh, of course there is a division of labor here, there is a division of labor between you and the cameraman and the scientist and myself, but uh, I'm not sure this is very strong uh, drivers. There, there is division of labor there has been for, 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 forever. The only thing which is typical of, of a technical uh, as such is that when it's introduced into an organization, it stays. And you maintain the state of the organization for a slight while. So this is why, it, uh, I don't know, this chair, for instance, uh, is sitting me, it's holding me, and it's slightly longer lasting than, than me. Actually, this could last for a very long time. So that's what technique does to an organization. If not, organization is a shifting, moving uh, set of uh, relations which have no durability. But if you add a little bit and pieces in it, which are coming from what is called uh, the non-human, usually material, but it can be also legal, uh, it lasts a little longer. It can be answered, this question, only by empirical cases. I don't think I've read many uh, historians of technique and economists of technology, uh, and you could make very interesting uh, inquiries about, for example, the long term range of innovation, the cycles of innovation on a long term period, a few uh, decades, etc. You will always uh, have a very rough uh, idea uh, to answer your question. Because most of the time, uh, the, precisely because technology is so much the same thing as social and political and legal relation, it depends on so many factors that the sort of aggregated answer to this case study um, never worked very well. For example, Many people have tried to um, find laws of innovation um, and um, sub, sub, subsidize uh, these laws of innovation, create, uh, I don't know, engineering parks uh, and that sort of thing. And Germany has been very successful at that. But the problem is that um, if this is very rough. I mean, of course, it's better to have, if you say, a more open society, lots of engineers, lots of money to do the scaling up, lots of research. Uh, educated engineers, 
you can say this is, this is good. I mean, it's, it's a good drive. But uh, if you wanted now to follow that on one specific uh, innovation, uh, you would be very surprised because suddenly you would realize things like, I don't know, the diesel gate uh, suddenly arriving there for reasons which are linked to the legal uh, demand made to automakers by uh, uh, institutions, leg- uh, state institutions, and then engineers finding a clever solution, but the wrong sort of cleverness, so to speak. And um, you will have to go case by cases. And again, when going case by cases, you will visit uh, a large part uh, of, the, of Europe, of Germany, or, or France. So this is why, in order to get into technique, you need to change the way you appraise it. And this is a very important aspect. The, the, the way to appraise the technique has itself to be adjusted to what I say, which is when you study a technique and it's the difficulty of its innovation and the reason why it works or doesn't work, you have to uh, bring to the study of it special uh, type of senses and special type of principles, which are not the one you would use uh, easily um, for uh, normal economical theory, for instance. The reason is that precisely when a technique arrives, it just shifts the whole uh, sort of uh, set of attitudes and uh, presupposition that people have. It's made for that. It's disruptive. When you arrive with a technique, poof, all the calculation of all the people who were there with a certain idea of what is the state of society is modified. Oh, that's a much easier question because they differ uh, radically by the fact that uh, innovation since, let's say, uh, Newcomen engine I'd say all the way to the 1980s, that is 19th and 20th century, were driven uh, with this idea that uh, Ulrich Beck, as the French, the German sociologist, has as nicely uh, um, called indifference to after effect. So it was much easier to innovate in the 19th and 20th century. Because basically you were finding new solution to disrupt the state of the art at one given moment. You knew you had to uh, take care of some of the after effect, but the big after effect, the long term after effect was completely out of your um, ecosystem precisely. And now what's happening is that the after effect are all coming back to uh, haunt, so to speak, Every single piece of technology, uh, including this machine, which I'm sure this lighting system there, we will be told soon that it's bad for the eyes, that it has the wrong uh, wavelength, um, or that it's made by a uh, um, material which is actually destroying a large part of Africa, etc., etc. Well, the first thing is that progress is gone as, as a concept because now progress precisely was a 19th and 20th century idea of technical uh, access to resources through invention disrupting older pattern of uh, use of the earth and uh, whose after effect could be ignored. But all of that has, has, has disappeared. So now every, to, every time you talk about progress, you have to remember, uh, well, for whom, uh, what has been, uh, what, what um, consequences after effect has to be reintroduced into the definition of a technique. For example, if you take now an um, electric car, which is supposed to be the great solution, but if you reintroduce uh, the question of battery and the material necessary for battery, suddenly you have a hesita- an hesitation, let's say, uh, on uh, is it progressive or is it regressive? So the, n- the very notion of progressive or regressive is now completely uh, blurred. For, is it abandoning, for a Frenchman, abandoning nuclear energy, for instance, could be by the German, could be called regressive. I mean, the great country of engineering and technology, Germany is abandoning 
this, this technique, which, 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 is, which still might be progress. Again, it means that the way we evaluate techniques, the way we judge their development and innovation is completely wrong, because precisely we cannot use, we cannot sort them out by their uh, profitability or efficacy without taking the uh, after effect into account, which modifies every calculation of interest. Well, I think it's fair to say that there is a, a line which we'd call, uh, we could be called hypermodernism, which would be uh, the connections that uh, is uh, robotic, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, DNA manipulation, uh, a whole sort of, let's say, uh, iconic uh, technological hype uh, associated uh, for the public, I think, to take one, one example uh, with uh, Musk, let's say, uh, which is continuing the dream of technological innovation as it was uh, made in the modernist uh, period, with one <laughs> small difference, but essential, uh, is that it's not for the many. It's not for the masses, it's not for the whole world, it's just for a very small segment of very wealthy um, sort of Californian uh, tycoons, uh, which is for me embedded, uh, embodied, sorry, in the word of uh, M. Musk when he sent his rocket into space, with his, uh, which was a publicity for his car, if you remember, and when he said this is fun and silly. Whatever you say about technology of the 20th century, it was not fun and silly. It was engaged into a project, a prospect of modernizing, which was serious, sometimes dangerous, but serious. And that's, so what's, that's one line, the one you see in the press, basically. The mass of stuff on artificial intelligence and robotics and are we going to be under, uh, uh, of a pass by robots and all these silly things. And the other direction is, of course, completely different and exactly the opposite, which is now every single technology has to be redistributed and refought in the line of, let's say, to take one element of a decarbon, decarbonate, decarbon, I don't say it in English, in English uh, decarbonate, we in French, economy. And again, the, the case of German uh, shift from nuclear to uh, redistributed uh, energy pattern is a, is a good example of how fast this could be uh, going. So th there, is, there is one line which is the inevitability of, of the hypermodernism, which is the hype that people try to sell us uh, and that fascinates journalists usually. And then there is another much more uh, distributed, uh, completely different uh, definition of what is innovation and not innovation. So you have people who consider that, uh, I don't know, permaculture is, is, is a progress. So it's progressive compared to uh, other form of modernist agriculture, which themselves are considered as archaic now. So the whole, the whole uh, systems of technology is going to, to change. And anyway, it will change very fast when it will be pushed by uh, the uh, extraordinary uh, uh, quick expansion of the ecological uh, catastrophe. So uh, if, the if engineers, uh, schools, uh, companies, uh, citizens are not able to absorb that shift um, the consequence will be hard, harsh, let's say. You cannot answer this question of um, the ethics of techniques, if you want, or morality of techniques, without being able to describe and define a selection mechanism which allows you to see if it's good or bad. Before, in the 19th and 20th imaginary of a technique, Basically, good meant progressive, and bad means regressive, so that you could actually order the techniques by this, uh, this uh, sort of uh, positioning. 
so the value system was fairly easy if it was modern and modernizing and act in the line with the modernizing font, it was good. And when it was not, then it was bad or archaic or has to be transformed or nice to look at but obsolete. But right now it's very different and with the problem is that we still have this tasting system uh, which doesn't work anymore because modernism is no longer the key to decide if this is good or this is bad, especially in agriculture, it goes all over the board. So uh, the, the, we don't have uh, a taste for the definition of techniques going in one direction or the other one. It's very difficult now to decide uh, the direction of any, any piece of technique. So sometimes there are more general rules like, is it going toward the decarboning, decarbonization or not? which is called renewable or sustainable or circular. I mean, this is sort of general uh, uh, judgment made on techniques. But it, this is very rough because also it's very weak compared to the uh, power of industry or the power of hype. Um, so I think right now uh, we are in a time when the, technical, the, the, the cultural, what, what could be called technical culture, the culture of people to taste or test technique is so poor that it's very difficult to answer your question. Is that in most of the time, um, if you ask people to talk about Moliere or uh, a painting by Degas, there people would have a taste, so to speak. But for technique, they will be just like five years old kid impressed by the hype. And that's very problematic because now we have to shift our whole uh, cultural affect, so to speak, and cultural feel for a uh, very detailed uh, apprehension of techniques. Well, I'm from a school um, which we call in our little circle uh, Actor Network Ferry, where we define society not by linkages which are social, but by linkages which are coming from all sorts of sources. Uh, so that social means not a certain type of uh, connector, but uh, the assemblage, uh, the gathering, so to speak, of lots of connectors. So uh, in our uh, fairy uh, law is one, for instance. The linkages which are established by law are very durable, even though there is no techniques to hold them. But they compose the association uh, which explains the dynamism, the dynamics of, 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 of social order, if you want. So is uh, religion. Uh, so is art. Uh, and technique is just one of them. So, and it's clear that in every single innovation, in every single object that you... Uh, you could see around here the enormous amount of legal aspect in the definition of their shape. Uh, it's clear from the, the glass of this, uh, of this uh, window here to every single kind of element, your, your glasses, uh, shoes, etc. So the legal aspect and the technical aspect and the religious aspect are free of the many ways in which uh, society itself exists. The mistake is to, to take them as uh, successive layers or separated uh, domain, if you want. So I am from a, a school which, are, which is interested precisely in the heterogeneity and the pluralism of those uh, connectors. So if you follow any uh, innovation, you might have one uh, segment which is due to a legal, uh, a legal dimension, because you have a, uh, a standard to obey. The next segment might come from organizational questions, the way the, I don't know, the head of a team behave. Uh, the next segment might be uh, a difficulty in the way the atoms are uh, resisting to the, uh, the, 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 the uh, trial, so to speak, I, I as an engineer, Trying to make do, etc. So, so the whole, the whole, uh, 
trajectory of a technology would be uh, segmented in our uh, reconstruction of society uh, by those different types of association. And we call it society, and sociology for us is not the science of uh, social connection. Society is a study of association. And association is a much larger uh, set. And to uh, come back to your question, uh, the, 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 the overall dynamic of, the, uh, of those associations are not driven by technique in the strict sense of the word. They are driven by technique plus law, plus organization, plus economic decision, plus very often values and cultural uh, um, sort of uh, patterns, uh, sometimes religion. I mean, it, it's this the set of connections which move in one direction. Well, um, I will preach for my own parish, which is... Uh, um, we should be able to uh, describe techniques in their ecosystems and not isolated in many ways, which is also, which means, of course, teaching of engineers. I've been doing this for 25 years in the school of mine, not very far from here. Um, but also technical museums. Uh, in, in general, education might be the, the best uh, answer. But there is also for government a completely different uh, ways, which is to uh, not exactly steer, because techniques are difficult to steer, but at least build uh, an environment uh, which is captured by the notion of alternative uh, techniques, which is quite funny, because in the old days when I started, when I was young, alternative technology was for the uh, underdeveloped countries developing countries, they were called, India, or China, and so on. And now alternative technology is a term that qualifies what we should do here, uh, because we have to shift the, the whole infrastructures uh, of our uh, technique. I mean, not only the carbon economy, but everything else. I mean, uh, agriculture, architecture, transportation, uh, food. I mean, everything has to be transformed. So it's very interesting to see that... Uh, people are interested now in technique, but they still frame it in the, in the sort of traditional uh, model, when if we should look somewhere, it's more, more toward uh, alternative technique. But it's all the things we, we try to sold <laughs> to the poor countries in the past. We should learn it for us now. How do you relearn to build how do we learn to transport people? How to and and what is the technical infrastructures uh, which has to be uh, built on this new imperative, which is no longer the hype and modernizing imperative, but which is a, sort of what I call a down to earth uh, imperative. Mm -hmm.